All right, all right. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, citizens of YouTube. This is Pastor Dow. We're here with Biblical Israel, part eight. I think a lot of offense today comes from misunderstanding. Um, and, and when you have people hollering and screaming and shouting at each other, neither side is really truly listening to each other. There used to be a time, you can even read it in the book, that people had vigorous debate and dialogue. Um, and of course, you know, emotions would begin to run, people would get excited, so forth and so on. While we all know uh, that Israel, the real true biblical Hebrew Israelites, had never been bleached out, they never have been whitewashed like European history has tried to make all of us believe and then tried to present to us um, a people from another nation, just happen to be Caucasians from the Caucasus Mountains, uh, the people uh, called Khazaria or Ashkenazi Jews. Uh, these are false, phony imposters uh, who have hijacked and stolen uh, the faith and the belief of Abraham. And, and you have to understand, the way that the Bible works is like this. The way that the law of Yahweh works is, is that anybody in this, anybody in this world could pick up and, and at least make an attempt to do the law, statutes, and commandments. And because this is like the law of the universe, gravity, what goes up comes down, they can literally receive the blessings of it. But that doesn't mean that the prophecies are going to stop, the judgments are going to stop. Um, and I said all that to say this. While Israel is scattered like the sands of the sea, and while they are captive in this diaspora throughout all the nations of the earth, the Most High Yah has not forgotten them, nor has he forsaken them. And this whole entire book is about his redemption for his people who he has chosen and who he has loved. Uh, once he sets his love on somebody, it doesn't mean, you know, that that's based on his character, based on his word, um, regardless of what they do. Um, but even at that, a lot of people who have chosen to rebel against him will perish in the process. Now, let's look at the sentiments of the Bible. You know, when we go over here to the commandments, all right? Let, uh, and this is, this is something that is definitely uh, not preached and not taught. Because in this country right here, you go to the majority of these churches, assemblies, synagogues, everybody wants to preach the flowery message. Everybody wants to hear the message that causes people to not be offended. Uh, everybody wants to hear what they call the good side, um, but that's a false balance, and Yah hates a false balance. And and people today have chosen to uh, end that while ignoring the judgments of the prophecies. They have chosen to formulate uh, a God, a Torah, a Bazorum, a Barakat, a Shah, a Tanakh, so that it suits them. But regardless, irregardless of all this, Yah is not playing our game. Um, the prophecies will take place and they will go forward. So let's get some understanding and see the reason why some people are so passionate today and so angry today. First of all, we need to understand that Israel was a rebellious nation. Um, we broke willfully his laws, statutes, and commandments. And in that, Yahweh turned us over to the other nations as a whooping post to whoop us and to beat us into submission. And then another generation would come along and then they would understand, read the Torah, kind of like Ezra and Nehemiah did. And they would be zealous for the law, only one or two righteous men. Um, and then they would convince the nations that the reason why we're in the condition that we're in is because we're forsaking the law of Yahweh Elohim. And if we want to be able to return and see blessings not upon ourselves, but on our children's children, um, then we need to actually return back to the obedience of the law. Because uh, remember, the psalm says, thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. And so what people need to understand is this, and, and this is what a lot of people will not communicate to you. Now, let's go over here uh, to Shemot 20. Uh, verse 5, okay, and that's Exodus 20, verse 5, and let's, let's read it directly how it, it is worded in the King James, and I'm going to draw a narrative here to show you something. Now, listen to this. Now, we know that the commandments was given to the children of Israel by the custodian of the law, Moshe, who is commonly called Moses, all right? It says, and thou shalt 
not bow down ourselves to them, talking about likenesses, images, uh, graven idols that have uh, things fashioned and formed after things in heaven above or earth beneath. Thou shalt not bow thyself to them, nor serve them, for I am the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Now look, here's the key right here. This is stuff that you never usually hear people talking about. And I'm going to talk about it because Yah eats a false bound. Look what he says. Visit the iniquity of the fathers upon the children until the third and the fourth generations of them that hate me and showing mercy unto the thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. That's why I'm so blessed today because uh, I'm being shown mercy because I'm in this restoration process just before the coming of the Messiah. I'm in this restoration process to try to restore everyone who wants to be renewed in a right spirit and embrace these laws, statutes, and commandments the right way and, and become an obedient people to the word. But see, while judgment took place on the Israelites um, during the time of the Exodus and they wandered in that wilderness, uh, for 40 long years because of they murmuring, griping, and complaining. Um, everybody, every single body that left out of Egypt, that left out of Mizraim, did not go into the promised land, including Moses himself. The only two of that generation that went into the promised land because Yahweh was so fed up with his people. See, they didn't understand that when they got out into the wilderness, that the wilderness experience was a proven ground. It was a testing ground. It was a trying ground. Y'all was just not going to sit here and pour you out the kingdom of heaven and give you all these blessings simply because you exist, Israel. He's going to test you and prove you and try you to see what's in your heart. And you know just as well as I do, when things don't go the way we expect it to go, the first thing that comes out of our mouth is burning griping, complaining. And then the first thing we do is start looking for people who agree with us. And then we want to cause heresy, insurrection, sedition in the camp. And this played out over and over and over and over again in Israel. And, and then check this out. The only two of that generation that entered into the promised land was Joshua and Caleb. And you know the reason why they went in? Because they had a different spirit. They were a different attitude, a different consciousness, a different mindset than, and, and than the regular Israelites uh, that came from the previous generation. So Yahweh, you know, because they were unworthy to inhabit the promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey, um, they loved death and they got death and they all died, every single one of them in the wilderness. Um, so we need to understand this. And this punishment was a punishment that went to the third and the fourth generation. See, what this society don't understand, you as parents, you as a father and a mother, there's a thing in the Bible called generational curses. And most of you are selfish as hell. And you don't understand biblical you know, terms, biblical uh, theology, uh, biblical scholarship, uh, biblical prophecy. You don't understand. Whatever you do in this life, as authority figures, especially when you have children, it is ultimately going to affect, especially if you are sinning. It's ultimately going to affect, especially if you are committing iniquity. It's ultimately going to affect not only your children, but your children's children. Third and fourth generations. So you go out here and you sin. Uh, you play whoremonger. Uh, you play um, idolater. Uh, you go out here and experience with homosexuality, that abominable practice. That curse is going to perpetuate all the way down to your children's children. It's called generational curses, soul ties. And the father, while you may receive some form of judgment while you're living, the ultimate judgment is going to take place because Yahweh is going to get your children for your transgressions. He will in no wise acquit the guilty. And I think one of the things that we're missing in this generation because we've heard so much theology that has tried to liberate the minds of the people today that we have totally missed the intent of the Father. Let me explain it to you the right way in case you get it wrong. And most of you have got it wrong. See, you are under the Osporus. 
And you're under the attitude that when you go out and you sin, all you have to do in order to make it right is to say some words and repent. And that makes everything all right. But that's not what the law says. Repenting is not going to remove your sin. It takes an atonement. Um, it, it takes reconciling. And it takes some godly sorrow that work with repentance. But not only that, you are going to pay for every bit of sin that you have ever done. You're going to pay for it. Oh, you may be forgiven. And the blood has made atonement and, and covered it up. But you're forgetting the part that you will pay for every single sin, transgression, and iniquity that you've done against the Father. Because while there's sin between us as human beings, when you transgress the commandments, this is personal between you and the Father. And I know that Christianity has dressed it up. I know that Messianic Judaism has dressed it up. I know that a lot of these false crypto Jews have dressed it up. I know they all have dressed it up. And see, and this is the reason why you have lost the fear of Yahweh from before your eyes. Somebody need to tell you, you need to stay away far away from sin as possible. David chose to go out and to sin and commit the sin of adultery because he laid with a Hittite's wife. That's what he did. And... Yahweh said to David, because you spurned, in other words, here you are my representative, and you made me look bad. So therefore, the sword of Yahweh is never going to depart from your house. Look what happened after all that. Look what happened to David's house, simply because he chose to commit adultery. And see, you people, why you think stuff still go wrong in your life and in your family today? I don't care how much you try to insulate and protect you're going to pay for everything. He will in no wise acquit the guilty. So when the Messiah comes along, he tells you by their fruit, you should know them. And then he says, if you're going to repent, then you need to bring forth fruit, meat for repentance. See, what most people do today is say, repent, they repent. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then after that, they go on with an unchanged mind, an unchanged attitude, uh, a spirit that you can tell literally has not been converted because it's only... Just give it a little bit of time. That's because fruit develops from season to season. And each fruit has a season in which it meets its maturity rate. And what people have done is they have caused you, who they have said to you, I forgive you, to drop your guard. And they have never really truly repented. They said words, but you can't see any fruit in their life to back up the words that they have said. And that's why the Father wants you to pay attention to fruit. You check out and see if this tree is healthy, if it's maturing, and if, if what they have said, their, their repentance meet, and it brings forth good fruit. Because a good tree cannot bring forth corrupt fruit, and a corrupt tree cannot bring forth good fruit. And by their fruits, you shall know them. And so you've been taken advantage of by many people who said, I'm sorry, and they have never met the conditions of repentance they have never had any godly sorrow, and they have never changed. And because they have never changed, um, later on, they come back and do the same thing to you again. It may not be the same way, but it's in another area, but it's the same spirit. And you experience bitterness, which the devil has all this as a grand design uh, to tempt you into bitterness, to cause you to break um, the last six commandments by not loving your brother as yourself. Um, and people fall into this trap all of the time because they refuse, listen to this word right here, to guard their heart with all diligence because you put so much stock in what men's words say that you never pay attention to the fruit and you never give it long enough to mature. That's like people, when people say, I'm sorry to Pastor Dow, when they say, I'm sorry to me, I go, okay, that's good, good, I forgive you, but you better believe I'm watching, number one, to see if you're going to bring forth fruit. Now, I'm going to see if you're going to be obedient. I'm going to see if you're going to meet the conditions. And it's going to be a, a, a long time. It's going to be a season before I, I want to see a character change just like you want to see it in me. Just like you want to see it in me. And don't play the hypocrite like you don't want to see it in me. Yes, you do. And that's another problem we got in this society. We love judging others rather than judging ourselves. And that's the reason why we're blinded to each other. But I'm going to sit and wait for a long time. I have learned Patience. If anybody knows me, they know that I am a very patient man. You know the reason why? 
Because the Bible says in your patience, look at this, you possess your soul. You possess your mind, your will, and your emotions. I don't have time to run around and be bitter against people when I know that man is fallible and they're flawed. No, I'm going to watch. And if I don't see fruit that meets for repentance, then that's letting me know the conditions of these people's hearts. I know what's coming out of the mouth, but I also know the deceitfulness of the heart. Now, if I see someone meeting their conditions, man, you, you ain't never seen a restoration the way that I would restore people. And I've got, got to tell you that only a very few people have ever met these conditions um, and when they transgress against me. But if I see that fruit, man, it's undeniable. It's undeniable. What can I do? I can't fight against y'all. I can't do nothing but restore. That's all I can do. Um, but I tell you, it's a sad situation. Now, this is what the nations don't want to hear. The United States of America has sold to the wind, and they're going to reap the whirlwind. As thou has done. So shall it be done to you. And you go read the prophecies in Joel. You go read the prophecies in Obadiah. You go read the prophecies in all the prophets and in Isaiah, Yeshiahu. Uh, you go and read all these prophecies and stuff. And then you put it over in the book of Revelations. None of these nations, even though Yahweh used these nations as a whooping post to beat Israel into submission and get him back to his law, statutes, and commandments, these people went further than what was already instructed because they hated and despised us so much, which proved that they hated and despised the father. And so America, I'll give an example. Look at Egypt. It is not fertile land at all. Look at the judgment that happened to Egypt and look at Egypt even still till today. It is a desolate place. I mean, it is, it is a desert, a wilderness. Um, and this, it don't have the glory of antipathy like it used to have a long, long time ago. The, I mean, the wonders of the world. Nobody's looking to that place no more. It's a relic. That's all it is. It's just a relic because of the judgment of Yahweh. So guess what? All European nations, your fathers are the ones that created all these atrocities and done my people wrong. Here's a hard pill for you to swallow. So guess what? You may think that you're prospering for a little while and getting by. But your children and your children's children are going to pay for the sins of the father. You're going to pay for slavery. You're going to pay for the injustice. You're going to pay for the raping, the robbing, the murdering, the lynching, and the killing. So look at your children. Look at these babies that are being bought up right now. They're going to receive the just the in, they're going to receive the judgment of the injustices that you have perpetuated against my people. And not only that, when we even get to the kingdom. Your children, because you're going to be in living, burning hell, but your children are going to literally be licking the dust up off my people's feet, thus saith Yahweh. And to show you these prophecies, which you ain't going to hear preached in your messianic churches or assemblies or synagogues, to show you that these Christians are way out of touch. Yes, Yahweh 4922. This is Isaiah 4922. Thus saith the Lord God, behold, I will lift up my hand to the Gentiles. This is the father going to do this to the nations and will set up my standard to the people and they shall bring thy sons in their arms and thy daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders. They're going to treat us like kings and queens and kings shall be thy nursing fathers and their queens thy nursing mothers. Listen to this, what the nations are going to do to Yahweh's people, Israel, they shall bow down to thee with their face towards the earth. The nations, all you European nations that have destroyed my people, the prophets he said, whether you like it or not, you're going to bow down with your face to the earth to my people, Israel, and lick the dust, lick up the dust off thy feet. Y'all hear that? Again, and kings shall be thy nursing fathers and queens thy nursing mothers. They shall bow down to thee with their face toward the earth and lick up the dust of thy feet and thou shalt know that I am the Lord for they shall not be ashamed 
that wait for me. And I'm not going to be ashamed because I already know the impending judgment is going to happen. So nobody's escaping. Nobody's getting by. That's why you often hear me make this statement. Hey, you better enjoy your rulership. You better enjoy the time that you have, especially all you liars, because you're getting ready to spend a long time paying for it. But you know what? Because you refuse to acknowledge the truth and repent, because see, some of you people from other nations, you have the opportunity to stay these plagues if you will repent and do things right in order to preserve your children's children. But you ain't going to stop the prophecies. And I know that this is unpopular stuff that people don't want to hear. But you European nations, everything you've done to Israel, the chosen seed and the chosen people of Yahweh, you're going to get it back on your head. Your children is going to be sold. And you're going to, you're, everything, all these things, while you were enjoying raping my people, robbing my people, including the Indians, um, and what, how you have decimated this country, how you have reached your hand out in so-called peace and destroyed them for an opportunity, and now you own their lands. Just like, just like the, the, um, the, the seed of Jafat own my people's lands over there right now. It's all coming back to us, every bit of it. And you're going to dress your sons, your daughters are going to dress our vines. So rulership is coming back to Israel. Now ask yourself a question. Why is it that people always dress this up? And why is it that you don't never hear this stuff preached and taught? Because it's written right there. You can go read it for yourself. You can get mad, get offended at me all you want, but you still are not going to change biblical prophecy because it's thus say of Yahweh, my Elohim or our Elohim. Um, and it's a painful thing. I know it is. But as you have done, so shall it be done to you. America, you have lived by the sword. And you have funded this Khazarian state, these Ashkenazi Jews, with your military power and might. They have lived by the sword and they have decimated the Palestinians. Guess what? You will die by the sword. But you're going to be dead. But it's your children, children. So look at your children and look at the seed that could possibly be coming from them they are going to receive the judgment of the Most High God. It's painful. I think from here, we're going off into the captivities of the Greek and the Romans, and we're heading on over to the New Testament. Shalom, the king is coming. And believe me, I am so happy. I am, because when Jesus said, vengeance is mine, I will repay. European Union, get ready. Because he will keep his word.